Let's get started. We'll call this meeting to order. And our first order of business is a spotlight. And you're going to be doing that? Yeah. All right. I'll just take a second to share my screen here. Let's see. Cody, do you want to just hit the got it? Just message so then you can, it'll show the full screen then. All right, perfect. Okay, tonight's spotlight is Act 31. This is something that we've spotlighted um, for school board meetings in the past. It's a nice review to do every few years um, because our practices continue to change and continue to improve. So I'll go through um, sort of the definitions and requirements um, as well as some optional components as well. And then we'll talk about like our commitment to the district to Act 31. Uh, I'll have a few different examples from the different grade levels and how we meet it. And then we'll end with sort of what our next steps are, how do we engage in continuous improvement regarding this topic. Uh, Act 31 is the American Indian Studies in Wisconsin, and it's a requirement in all public school districts, and it's also a requirement in pre-service education programs, so all teachers who are licensed in Wisconsin go through these requirements as well. And it's very specific to the instruction on the history, culture, and tribal sovereignty of Wisconsin's 11 federally recognized American Indian nations and tribal communities. I believe the specific requirements for Act 31 for public schools is that this instruction occurs twice in the elementary and once in the high school. And so that's an example of a way that we are committed to exceeding it. We want to integrate it into all of our grade levels, all of our content areas, and throughout the whole year as opposed to just standalone days or lessons. Um, to kind of explain how this all sort of fits together, we know that we teach the Wisconsin State Standards, and it's something the school board approves each year. And Wisconsin has done a nice job of integrating some of these components right into the standards. Um, and it's some of the ways that we teach the history and culture maybe a little bit more obvious or apparent, but tribal sovereignty is an important one too. And so I actually selected one of the Wisconsin State Standards for Social Studies on Political Science. Uh, you can see, I think, if you see my mouse here, uh, the standard up here at the top says Wisconsin students will analyze and evaluate the powers and processes of political and civic institutions. And then it breaks it down by grade level. So the first one on the left is kindergarten through second grade. This one is actually taught in first grade. And we compare basic political institutions, what a government is, how it differs at the city, state, tribal, country, and global level, and the roles they serve in the lives and the lives of others. So you can kind of see how tribal sovereignty is built right into the standards and um, right into our first grade instruction. Um, as the standard increases in third and through fifth grade, um, it talks a little bit more about classifying the basic structures and functions of government specific to local, state, tribal, and federal levels. Uh, in the middle school level, you can see it becomes more in depth. Where first we're comparing, now we're classifying, now at the middle school level, we're analyzing the structure, functions, powers, limitations of government at the local, state, tribal, and federal levels. And at the high school, we're evaluating the structure and functions of government at each of those levels. Um, another requirement that we have is uh, observance days. So this is part of Wisconsin state statutes, and it also is a school board policy. So there's 21 special observance days throughout the year. Um, you may think that those are very common celebrations or days that we're all aware of, but they're actually, some of them are really unique. And there's even, we're honoring people or events that I didn't know about until teaching here in Washburn or in Wisconsin. Uh, but those are required um, observance days that happen throughout the year. We meet those through announcements and through different activities. And then also Danielle Nepstead does a really nice job. She started to organize resources at the different grade levels so then we can engage in all kinds of cool activities and discussions around each of those observance days throughout the year. And then something in addition to observance days would be proclamation days. So these are made by the governor of Wisconsin. And these are not required, but some of them are really significant or really important, like Indigenous Peoples Day or Native American Heritage Month. Um, there are very many, there's a whole bunch of proclamation days, though. So I think in November alone, there's like either 74 or 77. And so it's sometimes difficult to tease through which ones are things that are really important and a huge part of our curriculum and our instruction, and which ones are maybe just like a fun fact, like Wisconsin's cheese curd day. Uh, in addition to that, like we mentioned, we have Native American Heritage Month and Indigenous Peoples Day, which we're committed to honoring each year. We also don't want to leave it as a standalone, just one day or just one month. We want to ensure it's integrated into our entire curriculum throughout the year, and that goes for um, other significant days and months as well. 
And then kind of putting all of those things together for Washburn, what is our commitment to this? And this is something Long Range Planning has been working on a lot is our, um, we call it our strategic plan, our mission, our vision, our values. And this strategic goal is part of our sort of vision statement as a district. This is one of our most important components. And what we're committed to is reviewing and updating our curriculum to meet and exceed expectations mandated by the state while embracing our unique culture and history of Washburn. And I think this uh, goal applies so perfectly to Act 31 because we're going to meet it, we're going to exceed it, what's mandated by the state. We're also gonna embrace our unique culture and history in Washburn. We're very lucky to live where we live and we are not only teaching about the history, culture and tribal sovereignty of others. We're teaching about our own community, about our um, current practices and past practices of our students, of our staff and of our community members. And I think that's just a really special thing to note too. How does this all fit together? It was sort of hard to find a visual to really represent it, but I thought this maybe table would help visualize what we're doing to organize this and also tie this to our school improvement work. Um, you'll see one of our top five goals for school improvement work last year and this year was standards work. What does that mean? That means organizing all of those standards, just like the social studies one we just reviewed into quarters. And we currently have that in place. So at every grade level, you can see exactly which standard is taught in which quarter. Um, our next step as we organize that is also organizing which units or themes or observance days or special activities are also within those quarters and match with those standards. Um, because sometimes there's repetition across grade levels and that may be okay or that may be redundant. And sometimes we may miss um, important themes or topics um, that are not necessarily represented in the standards, uh, but are important to our culture and our community. And so this is a lot of the work that we do that ties into our school improvement uh, practices. Next, we'll actually talk about how we put it into practice. And so um, at the elementary level, the early learning center, 4K and kindergarten, a lot of the work we do to meet Act 31 is through excellent literature. Not only are we choosing literature that has Native American characters, but also written by Native American authors. Um, I was hesitant to put an image to go with it because I don't want to portray this idea that we can select one book and this one book is going to represent an entire population or entire history or entire cultural practices, but instead we're using all different kinds of books throughout the entire year. Um, but storytelling, folktales, and um, read alouds are such an important part in that early, early literacy and early grade levels. Um, as the students move through elementary school, we continue to use folktales, legends, um, and uh, literature. We also start to coordinate more closely with local entities like Glyphwick, who have excellent resources for us, educational resources. And then also in third grade and in upper elementary into middle and high school, then we really start to focus in on history. Um, and I just want to take a minute to acknowledge that in order to teach accurate uh, history and true history, um, this is not an, an add-on. Act 31 is not an add-on or an addition or a different perspective. This is our the true history and the accurate history. And I, our um, elementary, middle, and high school do a really excellent job of introducing that history to students in a really appropriate way that's meaningful to them and helps them develop a comprehensive understanding of um, whether it's the history of our community, of our state, of our country, or of our world. Uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth of some exciting activities that happen there is um, every year our students in fourth grade uh, team up with our forestry students in high school to collect maple sap and boil it into maple syrup. Uh, we have an excellent unit on the Birch Park House um, in fourth grade that students really are invested in. That's a huge part of that curriculum and ties uh, English language arts and social studies together. Um, and then fifth and sixth grade, we start to learn, students start to learn about treaty rights and the evolution of those treaty rights over time. Um, some different examples at the middle school level, um, we meet Act 31 through math instruction. It was really interesting to hear about some of the math lessons that are happening in which there's measurements and analysis of tribal lands. Um, it's a context for math uh, equations and, and math learning. Um, this year, our middle school students did a, an essay on Indig Indigenous Peoples Day. Uh, what, you know, what was um, currently Columbus Day, and that is a state observance day, so we are required to teach about that. We also need to teach in an accurate and meaningful way. And then what does this evolution look like as people honor Indigenous Peoples Day, and what are the supporting points to, to move forward with that? Just to remind the board, board to action and added Indigenous Peoples Day to our required uh, observance days by policy. Correct. 
Uh, and then a couple examples at the high school level. Um, this is a huge part of our US history class and our world history courses. And um, we even have specific courses in social studies that are um, unique to our local community. Uh, but then also it's, it's coming up in our, our language courses and uh, the ways is a one specific resource that we're using. Um, our family consumer science classes actually did um, a quite a bit of work with harvesting of wild rice and other um, plants that are native and local to this area, harvesting pumpkins and then and cooking with them and, and uh, organizing recipes and, and studying people who have um, done a lot of work to make this uh, a, a well-known process. Um, so you can see it sort of spans across all different grade levels, all content areas and throughout, um, throughout the entire school year. I also just want to take a minute to uh, acknowledge the fact that we're always going to continue improving. This is not something that we look at as like a one and done or yep, we meet this requirement, let's move on. But we're always going to engage in, in improving and expanding. One way we do that is by critical and ongoing analysis of resource and practices. Um, if you think about the literature that we use, we always want to be looking at what are we using it, whose perspective is it from, who is the author, who do the characters represent, and just taking a critical look at the resources that we use and, and keeping that up to date over time. Um, another thing, uh, when we were listing off all the practices that we do at each of the different grade levels, I also asked, what are the next steps? What would you like to see us do next? Where are we? Where can we go further? And something that came up pretty frequently was just incorporating more language. So spe uh, specifically Ojibwe Moen, which we have now added to our garden signs. And so every label that we have in the garden of the elementary also has the Ojibwe Moen beneath it, um, but also partnering with native speakers so that we can integrate the language into many of the activities that we do in our, each of our grade levels. And then just continuing that, that practice. We are live in such a unique and special area and we have so many excellent uh, partnerships within this local community that we can continue to work with um, and, and help students get to experience things firsthand and have community field trips. So those are a few of the areas that we'll continue to grow in. Right. Making those signs was so interesting. Send them off to get made. It was made a battery did a really nice job with the tech head students. And uh, when we went over to early school, took the signs over to their wood because they had the actual machine that could do all of the water. And uh, so it wasn't just making the signs, it was a full. So our high school kids making the signs, understanding why they were making the signs, what they represented, where they go. Um, so they had a black back with their time in the elementary garden, but also understanding the importance of what they were doing. So kind of a project. We have questions about this spotlight. We don't often talk after the spotlight program. I have a question. Is there, uh, like, I don't know how this would work, but um, I'm, I'm hoping that there would be room in our activities because that's our natural, like, you know, we can have field trips and we can have outings and we can have partnerships, but our activities are already doing these things. You know, we're already integrating and we're already collaborating and playing sport. Um, and I just, I wonder if there's like ways to incorporate some of this or improve. Um, uh, and through our experiences, um, or incorporate some of the learning in some of our like extracurriculars, mm -hmm. too. It seems like such an opportunity, absolutely. Yeah, to just be respectful and, and, mm -hmm. under and understand where you're going, like, where am I going to? Mm -hmm. this yeah, and I think the leadership, um, season 12 is a nice leadership that our sportsmanship. Mm -hmm. So, and I know those are topics that have come up there in the last few years uh, from an unfortunate situation mm -hmm. from you know, other schools, but the, the relationships kids have through student college, student government, and then bringing that back and then sharing that with our entire student body uh, started that process. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and understand and things are brought up that need to be corrected a lot. Mm -hmm. So I think that's an important place. And I know we had a well a few years mm -hmm. ago, and another one was planned and then COVID hit. Mm -hmm. That's right. But yeah. we're still at money uh, set aside in that account that we didn't use mm -hmm. the last time for Powell. So that was really cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yeah. I wonder if we could do something jointly with people because they, I mean, they have a powwow every year at the school. Um, they also have um, dancing for the younger students almost every week. Um, that there may be some way we can combine with them. 
when I started working in Bayfield, which is a number of years ago now, I'll have to say I was actually shocked that I have lived in this area my entire life and I knew so little about the culture, so little. And we're really surrounded um, by, you know, the, the two different reservations. Um, and and I was I was actually I felt I felt ashamed that I knew so little about it. So I'm glad that there's much more going on. Um, but I think that it would be great to have, um, you know, people from Red Cliff come down and do some storytelling and um, do things like that. I think that would be great for the kids to hear. Yeah. Overall student population is Native American. So we have a large population, growing population. Yes. Is, is there an opportunity to have like, um, make like an official liaison to the tribe or something like that, or to the tribe? One person we started that. working with is the head of education for the Red Cliff Tribe, mm -hmm. Jared Blanche, and so it's he's a great resource, mm -hmm. um, and he may have suggestions to and other people to continue to reach out and partner with. Mm -hmm. Nice, um, you know the the elementary when they do their you know the, their dancing on Friday afternoons, it's it's pretty unique mm -hmm. and it's pretty fun it would yeah. be kind of fun to be able to try to incorporate that together because that's a great way for the kids to get to know each other and mm -hmm. um, they have lots of regalia for the kids to wear and use and cool. it's a great um, and then just one more like once we had a conversation maybe it was in Lauren playing but we talked about um lacrosse at the club sport mm -hmm. yeah um, and I don't know if that was like an interest. How do we, um, maybe that was like community because maybe there's like a, a community who was like definitely interested in doing something like that. But um, but that's another. Well, the champion still is at the table in the district. So um, I'm passionate about adding that um, oh. just as a sport, uh, not only because of, you know, the growing interest of that sport. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of teams around us right now to work for. Mm -hmm. We did reach out to Beto. If you go in as a co op uh, at that time, they were not interested. Uh, but it's something that I know is still on the call sheet for Shandra to bring forth to offer. There's a, always a little pushback about you know how many sports can a school our size support? Is that going to take away from a spring sport or a fall sport? Um, and I look at it as we have very low participation yes. now. Um, I don't look at it as taking away from maybe you would have a player or two come from something, but it would open up. Another avenue for a lot of other students, mm -hmm. even if it's just at a club level, right? Uh, to get involved in something. And and is it the um and is it the like traditional uh, Native American lacrosse, or are you thinking more of the like co-op teams with all the gear and all the helmets and everything? Well, there's two there's two pathways. One could be a traditional because they're a league, yeah, mm -hmm. not as organized or as frequent that they. Play, yeah, so yeah, it's not yeah. a seasonal type thing. Mm -hmm. And then the WIAA and then the Minnesota Athletic Association have a structured league. Well, and, and, uh, actually, uh, team sports. Team sports. Yeah, okay. okay. And I believe we offered it as a summer school yeah. option this year, and it had a nice turnout. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So hopefully that'll mm -hmm. spark some interest. Yeah. Um, can we, like, I mean, is it possible to ask, like, Shandra for an update on that this spring or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we supported gymnastics for two, two students. Mm -hmm. I think we can forge ahead with something like that as well. Thanks, Ivy. Um, we're going to move on to public comment. And I know that there was some concern expressed about this statement. Um, I just want, want you to know that there are methods of um, talking to people if there is a concern about specific people um, by going to our administration um, and then following that chain. Um, but making sure that we're not speaking about specific people here not only protects staff, but it protects the, the people in the audience who might have incorrect information and be saying things in a public forum. So I'm going to go on to say, if you would like to speak for public comment, each person has three minutes and it's their time alone and cannot pass that time on to someone else. If you have concerns or comments about individuals, those are not appropriate during public comment times. So please don't say anything that would identify circumstances or a person 
or a group of people directly by what you say. Be respectful. People on Zoom are welcome to join the public comment. Just please put your name in the chat. So I will. Chat is open. Has been open. Chat. Okay. Is there anyone here that would like to speak? Dual picker. I I do understand what you, what you're saying and so forth, but I still respectfully would uh, say that if somebody does have a concern, you know whether it's with a person or not, you can't control the fact that or you shouldn't try to control the fact that um, you don't think they should say it publicly in uh, the forum. I don't know that uh, I was not aware of that particular rule or policy or whatever that you said, you know, you could go to the, and I would imagine that if people um, have an issue with a teacher or anyone in the school, that's always an option to go ahead and go to that person directly. And, and but for some reason, there might be people who maybe uh, because of scheduling or whatever, they can't do that, or they want to come here and say something. So I still think that they should be able to, if, if, the situation were to arise, they should be able to speak freely and not have, you know, constraints on them outside of maybe a time limit or being respectful. So that's just my thoughts. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> let's move on to committee reports. I'm assuming you don't have anything you wanted to talk about, Cody. What's that? You didn't want to make a public comment, did you? Okay, <laughs> just checking. Um, Long Range Planning Committee. Uh, we had a very nice meeting um, where we got the results of our big survey. Um, I think they were um, very, a very good result, very good turnout. Um, we got a good response. And it was very clear yes to go ahead. Um, so we got what we needed. Um, a little extra info on you know, what each district was and what the demographics were, but all in all, really good um, results and turnout. So we can move ahead with a clear intention. Um, we got our administration, administrative reports, but I mean, I'm not gonna go into really those. Y'all are the experts on those. Um, we also talked about our strategic planning and it was, I think we were all very clearly in agreement that we didn't want to start fresh with a brand new strategic plan. Um, there's lots of obvious reasons why we don't want to start fresh. Um, you know, we've done a lot of work up to, to this date. It's been working well for us, but we need to tweak it. Um, we want to get um, some feedback from the community, correct? And we'll be moving forward with that, I think, in December, right? Um, Otherwise, um, building and grounds continue to do a really bunch of stuff. Um, we had, I think, a really great open discussion about a lot of different topics. Um, we got a little fresh update on the website and the updates that are coming on that and the go live. I don't know when the actual go live for that was, um, but we got a, li a little um, viewing of what it's going to look like, and it seems like. It's, it's going to be great improvement. Um, we talked about the parental parental advisory committee, if that's the right words. Um, that seems to be a huge success and a great addition to how we all, you know, talk to each other, you know, move forward on, on things. Um, and there was some discussion about our extracurricular um, the apps, the the team apps that we use to communicate between the coaches and parents and the team members and kind of some ideas about like maybe maybe we should talk about using just one app, but very open discussion about some of those topics. What if anything went missing? I think just circling through the we had a nice discussion about the trial uh for the survey, but we yeah. also explained businesses not receiving okay. and then outlying areas and they explain why mm -hmm. some of those outlying or border national right. and washburn addresses right. might not have received anything. Did they say what was the why? 
Yeah, what was the why on that one? The company that, well, and help me, Stephanie. He, he said it was just basically, you know, they try their best to cover everything, but the outliers are always difficult, like the outlying areas on where... Um, where yeah, the lines are? Where the lines are, I guess, um, because they, they outsource that actual mainly to different companies, right? Mm -hmm. And not even just one company, it sounds like several companies. Yeah, um, so, I, you know, it wasn't, certainly was not an intentional miss on those outlying areas. But the, you're talking about a lot of people. I, I did not hear numbers, so. No, but I'm saying there's a lot of people that did not receive the meal. Yes, we have a um, well, I can tell you for sure the numbers yeah. run were on or not the numbers but the percentages and they were for the towns the number that came back from each town trip. yeah I don't, I don't know if they can identify how many were missed because or how many didn't come back because uh, right of, because they didn't right, get them because they didn't get them right um, but they did point out too though that um we had good copies too and I, we did a lot to try to get Mm -hmm. Access to anybody who might have been missed. No, yeah, they were not. We, we, I think we tried. Social um, media. I don't think there's. I don't. I don't think the company did a good job. I don't think. I mean, you're talking about a lot of people how that were missed. We, how can we find out how many? Yeah, how, how I mean, we'd have to. Everybody in, in our area was. Missed. The, mailing, the total mailing. Mm -hmm. list Again, yeah. even the total mailing links doesn't represent each person in the household. So right. it's just to a destination. Um, but we can figure out, I mean, just 29% of the total that we have, we can mm -hmm. figure that out quickly in terms of how many, you know, which total sent out. Yeah. Uh, we can probably cross reference that with how many yep. links in terms of the addresses. Can't do that. I mean, because if you're talking about, well, yeah, we had the physical postcards here in the office, how would people even know that if you didn't get any mail? Yeah. But people but people who don't aren't associated with yeah. the school. I mean I mean I didn't get one. <laughs> Nobody in my area got one at all. Well you're not really an outlier either. No, we didn't get one in in our area and I mean we're a little ways further off than Ellen. Um but there isn't anybody beyond us. There's not another district next door to us either. So um, okay, so then basically we'll just take the population of like Barksdale. <clears throat> it wouldn't even be the population though, because there's more than one person. With, like only each home got a, the way you do it, it would have to be addresses. Address. Okay. Non business address. Non -business. And we can get that information sure. on our next um, long range planning event. That was the other thing. You know, when we have two voters. I think what's and you get one code. Yeah. Okay. You only get one that, one code to enter. He said it's not an exact science. Mm -hmm. It's an inconvenience that you'd have to call and get a code. Is what he had told us was within about 95% of what the sentiment is in terms of the response. Mm -hmm. So he was pleased with the total response we received. Not the result, the result speaks for itself, but the total response in terms of 29% right. are numbers that they don't see. Right. 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 Well, I mean, to get 64% from the city of Washburn is a lot. Yep. That was huge. Yeah. But when you only have 16, 11, and 10 from the three townships, that might be because there was so many people is didn't that, get them. Just to clarify, is that the total? Is that comprised the total? One hundred percent is how it was broken down. I don't or is know that what, percent of that community. In, I'm assuming it's the municipality that you live in. So it was whoever sent them back. I don't know what the, what it's trying to say exactly. Um, they, the way I interpreted it was that that percentage of the one sent out. Okay. So if that's not a, again, that's so that's not going to represent who didn't get a survey at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I. Right. Well, you know, and I think that we have to be a little bit careful because it's, that's a big population area. I mean, even though the city is. It's not 64% of Washburnians who replied. Of the survey, 64% live in Washburn. And 16% of the people who responded, 16% live in Bayview. Right. Oh, okay. And I'll give you the total. Okay. Yeah, we'll get it. 
I understand that, but I just want to make sure that you want you want us to take the next step and start putting numbers. And that's what the survey was sent out to I just want to make sure that the people outside of the city of Washburn are represented. And it doesn't feel like they were. I mean, because even when I brought that to your attention and you talked to him, still nothing. They went to the company that they used. They cross-referenced all the things that they sent them to. And they well, said, that's you know, I, I wouldn't be confident in, in anything that that company mm -hmm. did. Because I think, I think we, instead of not being confident, I think that we can just proceed with caution. We have a 5% like variable on the which we get back. So we're, you know, 5% is not tiny, you know, like it could go one way or the mm -hmm. other. It's, um, and, uh, and I think that we'll get the numbers and kind of find out if we get the numbers. But I think the bigger issue is if we want voices as we're going through this process, we better make sure that we don't have any other kinks in the future. Right. So that's, I, would, that's, I would make sure that like, I think that's a take home. I mean, yeah. I do think it was a, a big yes. Yeah, it that's was a we big yes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is I don't know that the, the concern of Miss Constituents in this question was huge. Um, not to say it's not important, but it's it's a red flag for our future staff. Correct. You know, like hey, I agree. Um, maybe or even an opportunity. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, really double down, triple down. Make sure that you're mm -hmm. they're getting a voice. Yep. And our next phase when we talk to Megan next week, we specifically target each of those townships. We are going to, that day we will be at mm -hmm. township meetings and be on their agenda. We'll be presenting data, we'll be presenting numbers. So this was to spark conversation and give us some feedback. But when we now market the next part of this, which there was probably 60 questions that came back that people couldn't even ask questions. Mm -hmm. We're going to start tabulating all of those and then go to those areas that have those questions and then give individual presentations to each of those townships as well as ones that pull up in the school district as we move forward. I'm just saying I, I'm glad that most people said yes, but I'm just saying with all the things that are going on, how people feel about school districts, that you have a big population that wasn't included. So they're thinking like, well, you know, I don't know if it's a big population. We'll get them. I know it's a big population, Tina. I live up there. There's a lot of people who live up there between just between me and Sandy's house. You know, it's not hard people. to get the the addresses of all the residents and townships. Yeah, you, know, you can go to the Bayfield County and get that list. I know. I just don't think you they know, tried. That's not hard to do. Oh, everywhere they sent, mm -hmm. and we'll compare that to which ones were missed. Mm -hmm. It ones. wasn't just your area, your area either. Because it was, it, was the, it was towards Bayfield. I believe it was the town chief. People stayed me because I got different. extra cards from him and passed them out. Um, and it was some people in town didn't get them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and my concern about that was the community doesn't, you know, you, you lose that kind of faith in, right. from the That's community because yeah. you're not, they're not reaching everybody. Yeah. And it it's not carefully done and in their minds informed. and everybody's informed and then so you have that issue and then you have some older people that i ran into at the coffee shop that mm -hmm. did not get them mm -hmm. at different areas all throughout some up so, at big rock some on the highway yeah mm -hmm. some in town some out of town um and and they got the card you know i gave them the card and there's two people in the house they both wanted to vote well then they had to either go online or call well some of them don't know how to work a computer you know and that whole thing in the first place entering the code and all that was confusing so you know we have an older population around here so maybe probably not the best you, method. Should, you should kind of look at that too mm -hmm. you know well one of our, our big goals is through all of this is to make sure we don't get the referendum and it will apply to anybody yeah. So, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's not a 
and certainly let us know what your ideas are for making sure we can reach that. Aside from you know getting any naming correctly to the right colleges, but you know those bigger issues of uh, how to get surveys answered in a non-computer world, right? Or or get the information out to them. There may be more blurry little stuff if that gets closely closely down mm -hmm. down to the wire on this stuff. Okay. Anything more with long range planning? Uh, well, Starlink was added oh. to the environmental site, so we didn't have not that I think we spent a little time talking about it. It's not that we want more, you know, devices out there or what the purpose is to be out there being major, but um just to have some connection for the students to do, you know, any kind of research out there for us to be able to post meetings out there that would have to be much in the mm -hmm. So um but we did a great job of getting up on the roof, not falling off, and uh, getting Starlink picked up. We also, uh, I think we might have mentioned that uh, CISA 12 is, uh, we signed on with CISA 12 to do a security audit of our um, cybersecurity audit. So just um, making sure that it's not 100%, but looking at what we currently have, our firewalls, our response, our notifications. Um, I know Cody does a lot of fishing expeditions with our staff, but we're a soft target and having them come in and, and work with Cody to, to examine that, I think was a, another piece we talked about. And then the website, um, since our meeting, the map did not change the front page because of the data about the survey on it. It's now been changed. So if you go on the, the website, you can see some you know new look uh, to it. It's not a new website, but it's a new look to our current website. And they also, there was a lot of discussions about not having access to these schedules. All the winter schedules are. Okay. I think that's what hey, I think you got it. Good job. <laughs> All right. Thank you. School Improvement Committee. That's good stuff, dude. Oh, that's right. I don't remember about what that one was. Uh, Ivy, School Improvement. We, talked, we also had a, a great lot of conversation on that one. What did we talk about? Help me out. Yeah, so we started off with a review of mission, uh, vision, collective commitments just to ground our work. We reviewed the data from this fall so far. So students have taken um, a universal screener right when school started and actually we're already seeing growth from students in both math and proficient uh, math and ELA um, just since that. So that the end of the quarter. So that was exciting to see. Uh, we did hand calculate the data from our state assessment from the spring. And so that will be released on a school report card actually on next Tuesday. And so that will go up to the public. We'll post it on our website like we always do. But it was nice. We kind of did the calculations ahead of time to see what that looked like. And we saw increase in proficiency levels in both math and reading in the elementary, in the middle school, and in the high school. Nice. So that was very exciting. That was our goal. Um, it may not reflect on the report card with the stars or with the overall score because it's a complex um, system that they use lots of different factors, but we'll go through all of that in the December board meeting like we did last year. And then we just talked about what the new focus areas will be for this year. Some of them are the same as last year. Some of them are new because we're working on those cycles and some are short and some are long. And we highlighted a lot of the work that was actually done this summer. And that was a big goal for us was that we didn't wait until this next round of data comes out that we continue this work all through the year and into the future years. And so just a really big shout out to the staff for we adopted a new math resource um, and that in that short amount of time and for our staff to implement that and all three buildings is pretty amazing. They've done a lot of work and um, it's same thing with phonics instruction, really great changes there in a short amount of time. And then we just had some good conversations about how to support students who are above proficiency. We often focus on students who may be below and making sure we have uh, good challenging opportunities for all students. And then I think the last piece was just on different types of data. So we look at proficiency level, that's just one piece, it's one snapshot, but also looking at different things like involvement in extracurriculars or um, uh, different, like looking more at science and social studies, uh, looking at specific skills within proficiency levels and just taking a kind of a comprehensive look at students to ensure that we're meeting our mission of contributing citizens in a global society. Um, yeah, we did a lot of discussion again about the high ceiling, low floor, as well, those students. 
Um, we talked a little bit about ways that uh, race and culture are, you know, some of the, the discussions that we had about Native American culture, um, you know, getting involved with all the school activities, um, making sure that we're doing what's right there. Um, and we talked about ways that we can increase visibility and transparency to on all the things that the school is doing, you know, all the amazing stuff that sometimes doesn't get communicated on the website. You know, so do that also, um, you know, more after school activities, some of the um, events that we're planning, those sorts of things. All right. 1,143 homes, households, and apartments received the house, emailing you the, all the address. Oh, so not, no business is received, but 1,143. And not population, that's not the population. Households. Households. Janet, what am I trying? I'm trying to think of where it is at the county that you can go and get the list of. Um, yeah, I know. Um, when we did that first referendum, I know that we did that. Uh -huh. It was Barb who did it, though. Yeah, and I so maybe called it a clerk. Lynn Adams would know because she uses it for, she gets uses them to get for the town of Washburn. So um, I can find out the department in the county that you can go to for and get the three townships. The households. According to uh, Lindsay Nas, uh, they went through the county, uh, double check with the post office, and they had concerns in the area of Barksdale uh, based on the boundary map that the district provided them. Well, that I can understand. Uh, but 1,143, we'll figure out which ones were missed. And mm -hmm. if you know anyone that's on there, by name or by address, let me know. Mm -hmm. We'll try to figure out why they didn't get the mail out. Okay. But we'll keep doing that. I know the response next thing going. <laughs> we didn't get it. Mine didn't come. People got it on Monday. I got mine like a couple days later. Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't get one either. Well, and sometimes the post office has some issues too, I'll have to say. I know that our clerk got a absentee ballot about a month ago from oh, April. Wow. So that's a little <laughs> not okay. But yeah, take a look at those and those, like I said, just cross reference. Uh, okay. Okay. But okay. well, one thousand one hundred forty-three helps me. All right. And the report. Administrative reports. Um. <laughs> well, we've had you know a nice series of meetings, and we put some of the things that are in the report or things that we didn't cover. I'm on a panel at Northland, uh, Northland College on Monday. Um, talking about the teacher shortage, so the education and invited some students to that. So we'll be presenting there. Uh, we have a personnel meeting coming up to bring uh, the personnel. We've got some changes. Uh, make sure that we're on the process going into the spring. A couple of vacancies, how those are being filled. A couple of reassignments that we're working on over the next couple of weeks, mm. and then the support staff handbook. Um, met once on the support staff, they gave us all the language changes. I'm my best to type those up. Janet had the schedule, so we're going to have another meeting and then we'll meet the personnel. Uh, then we're following up with Myron on the 15th, so we're talking about our next steps, uh, including that $55 million. And we prioritized areas, but now we'll come up with a, a more concrete plan on what's within the scope of reality. And we'll start working that tomorrow in July. Um, and if I could just speak yep. to the high school, sure. all starts have ended. Special congratulations to the soccer team for Yay. doing um, as well as they did, as well as bringing some much needed respect to small school in Northern Highway 8. Absolutely. I uh, wasn't able to go on Friday, but I was watched the entire game online and the commentators were <laughs> talking about how it began. And then by the you know end of the second period, they're like, I don't know how this team wasn't ranked at all in the state of Wisconsin. Because uh, they took the number two 
team to double over time. So mm -hmm. uh, just a great shout out to the, the coach and the team. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, one other thing I can share from Angie's report is just on the professional development committee, which um, is taking on some of the school improvement work. Each of those teams are working collaboratively and offering some nice after hours professional development sessions on standards work opportunities for teachers to either gain new information, receive that information, but also just to time and space to work and collaborate. And then also um, a little cross-reference between professional development committee and the wellness committee, uh, which the wellness committee meets and focuses on both staff wellness and student wellness and putting some nice pieces in place to support our staff, just some nice options um, whether it's social events or uh, related, related to physical wellness. So those two teams are working together to support our, our crew. Uh, for the elementary, we close out the first quarter. Uh, so report cards for elementary students go home on Monday. And then we also will be sending home the individual student scores for the Ford exam, the state test from this spring. So that will go home with the report card so families can see um, two sets of data, different information. That's just for third through sixth. Um, and then, of course, the seventh, eighth, and tenth graders. And then we have parent-teacher conferences coming up. And so we offer on Thursday night of next week, as well as Monday. And um, younger grades, it's a little bit more student-centered. The student will come with and show their family, and then they'll also have an opportunity to talk. And in the upper elementary, it's a little bit more traditional with just the family and the teacher communicating about strengths and areas of growth for each student. Uh, we did have our color run, which was a really, really fun experience. That's our annual fundraiser uh, hosted by the PTO, our parent-teacher organization. Usually it's a walk-a-thon, sometimes it's a read-a-thon or move-a-thon. This year was a color run. Um, we didn't know how it was going to go. We've never done that before, um, but it was so fun. All the kids received a white t-shirt. Um, they actually received sunglasses. It was a beautiful day, and we had music playing and colors going everywhere. There's an opportunity to just decorate your shirt if you weren't comfortable having getting all messy with color. Um, we had wonderful PTO volunteers and just the head of PTO care did a great job with it. So it was really fun. Uh, curriculum Council met uh, early this month and we actually combined Curriculum Council with Technology Committee and so we had some technology updates too. So we talked a little bit about the website and the Slate Conference in which we'll focus on um, AI and how that impacts schools and policies and instruction. Uh, when it comes to the curriculum council, we also worked a lot on just the resources that we've been updating or what lies ahead for us. Um, something that we're keeping a close eye on is reading resources. And so we've done some changes at the early elementary level in phonics instruction, but we're looking for a common resource uh, for reading instruction at the middle school, high school. So that's something you may continue to receive updates on as we move forward and look at next year. And then also um, when it comes to legislation, 20 was passed in Wisconsin. And so there's some very specific requirements on early literacy for public schools. Um, within that, those requirements, there's lots of changes for everybody, but really we, Washburn has had many of those things, components in place, at least to some degree. And so it won't be, um, it doesn't feel like a big scary thing or huge significant changes for us. Overall in the state impact, I think it will be pretty significant, but we'll continue to share those updates with you and just what that looks like for us when it comes to the screeners that we use, um, the individual plans we provide for students. I do believe there'll be a policy required by the board in the future, um, coaches, instructional coaches for reading, and we'll, we'll continue to provide updates on that. Um, school Improvement Committee met, uh, but we gave the update on that one. And then uh, Parent Advisory Committee, we also met. That was our first meeting at the elementary. And really great to have so many different parents and different perspectives in the same space at the same time, sharing strengths of the elementary school, as well as areas that we'd like to see improved and continue to grow on. Uh, we have lots of different input and different ideas. And so if you remember, it's a very big committee, bigger than you would traditionally have for that type of advisory committee. Um, and we had originally said quarterly and, and kind of this traditional model of like advise the school, the school will do some research, report back to this committee. Um, but that group's pretty active. They're pretty involved and they're willing to meet more frequently. So we decided to meet more uh, similar to monthly and focus in on a few specific topics. We did a little survey, had about half the team write back and say which they wanted to focus on. So in this month, we'll focus on discipline and accountability. What does that look like at the elementary level? How does that truly support education and the needs of our students? And then in December, we'll look at student nutrition and food service. I'll receive feedback and ideas there. And then in January, we come back all together as a team. And so for those two meetings, not all team members may attend. They just made it go to one or the other. And then in January, we all come back together. We'll review those two things. And then the other three topics were school safety. Just overview, what does that look like? Like we have a lockdown drill coming up at the end of the month. What does that process look like? Um, helping parents understand that. Uh, academic achievement instruction will cover that. 
And then actually the, the third topic was ways we can support our teachers as a community. And I thought that was really great that that came from the community. That wasn't something I suggested, um, but the community brought that forward. I thought that was something really great we can focus on too. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then my last update is actually just about the ELC. And so since I submitted the board report, we've had a few changes in the community. We know child care in our community is a need and a priority of our board. And we did, unfortunately, Evergrow and Ashland closed. And so we're just looking to see how that's going to impact our community and specifically our early learning center. Right now, we've had three new students added to our wait list since um, Evergrow cl closed. So we'll keep a close eye on that. Um, right now, just an update on our wait list. We have got six students on the preschool room wait list. We have eight on the toddler room wait list, and we have 30 on the infant room wait list. Mm -hmm. Of that 30, eight are um, from of staff members or families who are currently enrolled, so it would be the top of the wait list. How many um, are staff are currently enrolled? Eight. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then six on that wait list will turn two in January, which would mean they would then shift to the toddler room wait list. Mm -hmm. So those wait list numbers will continue to change based on the sure. age of the students. Uh, one thing that we've talked about, Dr. Wider, myself, and Jamie Leitner as the ELC director, is posting for a, a second preschool room teacher. The ratio in that room is 10 to 1 right now, uh, with a few more students on the wait list and a few students moving from the toddler room to the preschool room. We'd like to add a second teacher and increase it to 20 to 2. So I'd say at the same ratio, we would have more students. Um, and we're hoping that if we were able to post that soon, we would then uh, potentially add that position, position in January. And then we'd have some shifting from transitioning from other rooms. So it actually open up spots in the baby room, in the toddler room, and the preschool room. Not a ton, but some. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And always good to keep moving in that direction. So we'll continue forward there. Can you, do you have the um, numbers in each of those rooms right now? Yeah. Yep. So the baby, the infant room is eight students. So that's a four to one ratio. Mm -hmm. The toddler room is 12 students. So that's six to one. And then currently the preschool room is 10 to 1, and then we'll, we're will we hoping to then transition to 20 to 2, so 20 students. Okay, so how many is in there right now? The 10. The... And the preschool is mm -hmm. probably mostly three and people turning four this year. Correct. Because we have four-day week. 4K. Yeah, five day a week, 4K, right. And so this is the first year we weren't sure what that weight was, would look like. We were able to significantly reduce it. That's why it was six. And previously, it's always been double digits mm -hmm. because of that shift in 4K. Mm -hmm. And then it was even lower than six prior to at the start of the year, which is why we didn't have a 20, 20 students there. But now we're ready as the wait list increases and the toddler room transitions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do we have space if, I mean, I know that it's hard to get staff too, but do we have space to have any additional? Uh, yeah. Right now we have space for those three, for that increase of more preschool mm -hmm. students. Um, beyond that, we, we, we do not. Mm -hmm. And there's been people contacting Washburn because of the Evergrow closing? So just far, the three? Just three the three? Students, yep. Mm -hmm. Evergrow actually closes, what, December? Or? Uh -huh. December 1st. Yeah, point, so there may be more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Approval of financial reports and bills? Um, okay, so just a couple of comments. It seems like um, I I don't know, Jen, I'm gonna ask you, um, over the past year, it just seems like there's more like Amazon vendors and more and more, because it's just like, it's so convenient, it's so easy. Um, yes. And that's, I, that's I really noticed that this month in particular, I don't know if you guys noticed that if you like ever go through those things, but and it's also October, you know, like this is like the start of the school year. And again, I noticed that last month people are getting the classes ready. It's like, yep, that's still mm -hmm. what's kind of coming through this month as well. And, um, but you, you agree with that, right? It's just a lot more. We got out of one year, and it's it's just seamless. You know, we have starting requisition, you go out to Amazon, you check out, it goes right into the submit for approval. And yeah, it's seamless for the staff to yeah. use. I think mean, a lot of other kinds of genders. So it's not like the adults that are in the borderline. But everybody seems to love it. So. That's just an observation. That's shitty, I don't know. But um, I reviewed the October 2023 final vote and uh, would move to approve. I have a question. I'll go for it. 
um, Dr. Weider. Can you wait just a second? We need a second. Oh, yeah. Finish the motion and we'll discuss. Okay. Is there a second? Okay. No, we can go ahead. I, I was just looking at the, the tech lease agreement. So is that for new security systems or existing? Not upgrading. It's, up, it's upgrading our we have an existing system, it's upgrading all of that. And there's that's the one that on the action item down below. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's what I wanted to know. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Do we need to do a voice vote on the, on the financials or not? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Consent agenda. I move to approve the consent agenda. I'll Good. second. Are there any questions, comments? I have one. Okay. Um, do you, what's the plan for Dan leaving the kitchen? I uh, talked to Dan about possibly just staying on you know, part time or doing some remote work. Uh, he's going to do that through December for us. Uh, a lot depends on the 16th. Mm -hmm. uh, but the plan is that uh, we have it posted and we have a really, really, really good candidate that we're going to reach out to. So hopefully we'll have. A little time for transition between Dan leaving officially and the new person starting. That's good. Without that, uh, we'll, um, Jan and I had to go back to what we were doing prior to. I uh, will reach out to get some assistance from Greta for the menu, making sure that our ordering is done. We're looking at various options of planning, 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 and fall. But for right now, through December, uh, Dan is going to do the menu and the ordering for us. Um, we have a posting out for a food service worker. We had a candidate come right in, uh, local businesses right there in the area. So, one of businesses currently in food service runs his own restaurants. Good. I do have also a question. I spent the day number three at Green Middle School South Park. Uh, we're trying to rebuild our program. Oh, okay. uh, we haven't had a girl who's been able to do post team for a while. So, bringing uh, a program into the middle school, starting and getting them interested, getting a scoreboard, all those things that we need to do for that field uh, and that program we built, that we build interest. We know there's interest in the middle school, mm -hmm. and we're thinking by forming an actual team, getting them organized, that'll carry through high school. Great. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. All in favor of the consent agenda? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Discussion item items. Legislative advocacy update. I don't I don't have anything for that. Do you, Tom? Just a couple of things to keep our eye on, eyes on. So parental bill of rights that's currently on being discussed at Bill Five Ten. I I'll send it out to the entire board in the WA to do legal updates, but it, it's one that definitely reads. Uh, and they're also discussing uh, Bill 223 271 575 370 and 550. Mm -hmm. I'll also send all those to you. Um, it's one of those things that you know we start looking at prior to the um, school board convention in January about they throw these things out, they have some discussions about these things. Um, WASB, WASA, SAA, then we'll lobby for a specific platform. So I'll get these out to the entire board. But those are just things right now. They're just you know on the floor discussing things, presenting things. Uh, but a couple of those are to keep our eyes for sure. All right, CISA twelve. Mm -hmm. um, during the October meeting, um, it was reported that all CISAs have been charged with some large projects this year, and this year Act Twenty, the K through three literacy, is like a big one. Um, there's a nine member council established that will be working to review curriculum resources to make sure that they meet science-based literacy guidelines, reviewing early reading and readiness assessments and screenings, um, what specific interventions should be established to make sure all students make progress 
and making sure all teachers are trained in reading instruction by 2025. Um, then there was an oral report given regarding the peer review mentor grant and educator effectiveness. Uh, CISA 12 writes the peer review mentor grant on behalf of our districts. And there's 16 of 17 districts in the CISA 12 that are benefiting from the grant this year. CISA 12 is providing coaching support for 80 initial educators through these grants this year. That's quite a few. Um, additionally, support through the grant includes initial educator networking and training and leadership coaching. Okay, I have a question. So you said the um, each CISA will get kind of like an assignment and Act 20 was CISA 12's assignment. Is that? Yes. Okay, and so is that assignment because that's something that CISA 12 needs to improve, or is that because the state wants us to be experts in that area so we can disseminate said information to other citizens? Do you see the difference? Um, you know what I mean? Like, I, that, I, that's something the state was looking at, like, mm, you guys mm -hmm. need better focus on that. No, but it's-, it's I don't think that's no, that's okay. it at all. Okay, it's, no. beca it's because they want resources about Act 20 for the state of Wisconsin, and they just assigned CISA to get them. Or yes, college. and I think all the CISAs are working pretty heavily on Act 20, oh, okay. mm -hmm. but the, each CISA is going to have some significant responsibilities to work with each of the districts, Ah, okay. so it's it's going to be a big project for right. a lot of them, but yeah, yeah it's a big okay. focus for CISA 12 right now. Oh, great. Right. A lot of CISAs where it comes from, you just have to follow them, so yeah. when we receive federal funds for any kind of incentive, it's the state that comes out with one rules and regulations that it's disseminated that I'll through the right through something. Okay, thanks for that clarification. All right. Do you have your board goals with you? I did pop them in the shared drive for everyone. Mm -hmm. I need a copy. Yes. <laughs> Julie. Thank you. Um, I just want to quickly review these. Um, we didn't, what we did not do is do like some action items for each one. We just we put the goals. Some of them are action items. Um, we have a consultant. So that is, we're on our way there. Um, determine administrative needs. I think we've had that conversation. Um, I don't know that we're making a, any changes at this point in time. Correct? Um, Increased knowledge of policies and job descriptions by administrative staff. You know, that might be something that we should be looking at as far as getting the job descriptions for um, the superintendent, principals, um, other administrative administrators, if we could get copies of those, just so that we have mm -hmm. the ability to review them all. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense for everybody? Anything yeah. else you want to add to that one? I mean, I think we're looking at policies yeah. regularly, but um, if you could get us those job descriptions, I think that would be helpful. Hiring process. Um, I know that you know we've had some conversation about that, and I don't know that it's totally clear for everybody at this point in time. Is am I correct on that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't know if there would be, I know that you've, we've had some conversation and you've written some things down, but is that something that you could put together in a document of some sort? Facilitate transition for new administrative staff. I think we're working on that. Um, improve communication between board and administrative staff. Is there anything in particular that we want to do with that? Um, is that also part of I like my impression is that Nick was like, hey, we've got we've got this. Like it's like like a lot of the services are kind of a wraparound. Mm -hmm. And so when I am like reading, I'm, I was trying to find what like some of the stuff that he had given us, but um like the transition and even even the hiring process, mm -hmm. um, I really thought a lot of that was coming from Nick. Mm -hmm. 
And I think the hiring be- process for the administrator we have from Nick, but I know the hiring Jeez. process for the teachers would be is is what I was kind of talking about. But the administrative piece, I think we do have that. And we are following that because we do have a meeting next Monday, remember. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and we still need to look at a board self-evaluation and I've been looking at some information on that. Yeah. Didn't he have some? He I suggested he we some. go to the school board association for that. Um, actually, there's quite a bit about that in the in the book that Tina lent to me last month about self-evaluation. So we might do just something through that. Um, the second goal, provide opportunities for all students and families to be actively engaged while feeling safe and supported um, during the 23-24 school year. Um, provide support to continue with the green and healthy school concept. I don't know that we've done anything exactly on that, but other than you continuing know, to support it. I mean, it's come up in long range planning and you know, also it's come up in the parent advisory committee. Okay. And so um so I don't know. Um like we're it sounds like we've got like another like potential transition in our food service mm-hmm. department. And uh and I think that we'll just I mean we kind of naturally then just staying abreast of that I guess. Okay. I don't know what else we can do. Um, well, I think by having it on here, we're all acknowledging it as an important, mm-hmm. and, and so we take that out to our various committees, and mm-hmm. it's, a, you know, it's right. a reminder at each of those committees to, you know, keep those things in mind, yep. keep that green and healthy school concept in mind. Review and change policies that relate to student safety. And I know you were talking about the with the parent advisory, that was one of the things that you were doing there too, as far as, you know, yeah. having to having to do the lockdown process. Too. Mm-hmm. I say that kind of negatively, but I think negatively of that. But all right. Um, explore facility structure, signage, and visuals to ensure a safe and welcoming environment. Sounds like school improvement. Planning all that is going on as we move forward with those projects. I mean, that I mean, just yeah. doing the audit, safety, the king of safety, the buildings, the grounds, the plants, the flowers, the trees, the sidewalks, all that okay. has gone into everything that worked so far. Encouraged family engagement, including resident families and open enrollment families. I think we were looking at an emphasis with the open enrollment families. Have are there people in in the parent advisory group that are open enrollment? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yep. Which elementary, middle, and high school, and I also believe athletic advisory. Mm-hmm. Good. Is does anybody else have any ideas of what if there's anything else we could do with that particular piece right now? I think the strategic planning survey that we'll be sending out is going to bring in a lot of voices and a lot of information from those groups as well. Okay. So that December, January ish, we'll be reaching out to everyone in our school district, students, parents, community members, okay. staff. And again, having this as kind of, you know, what we talked about with our previous survey that we were just talking about, like mm-hmm. if, you, if you miss a population, you know, look at that as we're going in and keeping these particular especially our open enrollment families in mind as we're taking up these next survey. Mm-hmm. Uh, research possible ways to increase daycare and early childhood programming. And I I know we were going to have a meeting, but we didn't that never happened with the county. Mm-hmm. The there was conversation. Mark's been emailing us. Yep. Okay. Yep. So we've had ongoing conversations. Okay. We've been on that. I know he's pursuing some grants. Mm-hmm. Um, we have costs from St. Louis. We've been in communication with St. Louis. Mm-hmm. Ken just called me last week about St. Louis. Um, Where are we with St. Louis? Yeah, financial priority. I mean, it's, it comes down to money. How much do we want to put into the building that we would lease? 
um, we were talking hundreds of thousands of dollars to get it to the level that we would be morning star, young star, young star, young star, young star, young star three stars, four stars, five stars, five stars, five stars, five stars. Um, it starts with excess abatement of asbestos, bathrooms, bathrooms, viral mm -hmm. systems, like, just to be able to get into the classrooms. That's wow. yeah. a lot of money. <laughs> And I did share that with Kat that right now. Everybody knows there's a need. Mm -hmm. We all know that it's, it's that difficult to get teachers to uh, in this area in, in, in the industry in general. And that just comes out that the cost mm -hmm. in that space, but it's gonna be substantial amount of money to have it. Are there any other spaces? It was not the original plan of the new building, was it? <laughs> but, we have options with the middle school. Okay. Um, middle school traditionally has been, you know, six, seven, and eight. Mm -hmm. so sixth grade over, there's no middle school. Mm -hmm. over sixth grade, you, you get two or more classrooms right off the top. So there are options okay. for space. You look at office space, you look at mm -hmm. other areas within the elementary school, there's for space. Mm -hmm. And whether there's people or not is the trick. Teacher, I mean, it's, you know, licensed teacher. I mean, it's to keep our stars where we want. I mean, we did get a downgrade a little bit because we didn't have the academic requirements for our staff. Mm -hmm. um, so we have people, but to get to that bigger star, brighter star, whatever it is, exactly. um, yeah. five star, um, our staff going to have to go get trained. Well, where do they get trained? Not a program uh, along there. Not exactly. Yeah. Or what's time? Drop their program. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, when was that? Right. A couple of years ago. Yeah. It's, it's been a while. while. Yeah. It's been a while. Yep. Yeah. It's like LCO to develop the program right here mm -hmm. because there's such a need. Mm -hmm. uh, they weren't able to do it. So now the closest you have to go down to Rice Lake mm -hmm. or um, New Richmond. And how are you going to get people to move up here where housing is an issue sure. after they go to school down there? So mm -hmm. it's a and our staff does pursue all kinds of educational experiences oh, yeah. all the time, but it isn't the ones to qualify for mm -hmm. this hard increase. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wasn't. You know, yeah, yeah. Saying anything to the staff, it's just, it's just that's a part of it. Mm -hmm. It's a requirement, yeah. Or maybe we have to just, you know, like suck it up and go for four stars. <laughs> it's not in our nature. <laughs> and, but to provide the service. Yeah, because we still do receive five stars for the quality of care and the mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah. And I don't think yeah. anybody would right. not provide. It, uh, right. Yeah. It's right. Some of it's paperwork right. kind of stuff. It is. Mm -hmm. Inspections. Yeah. The inspection. No. The all right. Um, the third goal we have by the end of the 20 through 24 school year, we'll have new strategic plan to guide the district through the next five years. And I know you responded to that. We're working with a consultant that's in place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're working with Myron for the building needs um, and continuing support for school improvement work. There's a lot of that going on. So we're doing okay. Um, but I think we need to just keep this in mind so that we can continue to, and we haven't done this before that I know of. So, you know, it's a different process mm -hmm. of just kind of going through there and keeping us on track too. It's an aggressive, and I think it came up a long range plan. It's an aggressive year. Mm -hmm. We are trying to get done. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Um, publication of notice for school board election. Um, so WA has we sent out um, the spring elections. There's timelines, and November has a few timelines. And one of those is to publish a notice for the elections. You need to sign this. I did sign it. Oh, I already saw it. 
Then why are we passing it around? Just so you can all dial. Everybody has a copy of it. I'll put it in the chat. Just letting you know that was meeting. I didn't meet any requirements to get it. Good job. <laughs> all right. Individual action items. Um, number one, call for a vote to approve the second reading of the various policies. Is there a motion? No, I'll start at once. I move to vote to approve the second reading of the policy updates as listed in the agenda. I'll second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Number two? Make a motion to to approve the state the date for next year's annual meeting as October twenty fourth, twenty twenty four at six p.m. I'll second. Uh, any questions? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Number Is three. The request about moving it to this location instead of the cafeteria for hmm, acoustic. Oh yeah. I don't know. Right. Maybe we could talk to somebody about doing some kind of ample apple amplification in there. Would that be okay? There might be a way to do it. I'll have to do a little bit research for that. Is this room that much smaller than the cafeteria or I think it was more accessibility. That's what I kind of remember too. Right. Yeah. They just have to go in the door to the cafeteria down to round it up. Can you table that or do we have to publish the location? Oh, okay. Let's think about it. Think on that. <laughs> um. Okay. Number three. I move to approve Steve Witt as high school girl head basketball coach. I second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Number four? I move to approve Tech Lease District Security System. I'll second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And we need a motion to adjourn. I'll listen to it. I'll second. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Just be going to go with them. Yeah. It's next Monday, the clock. We're doing it here. Yeah.